Hey there, back with you on this Tuesday edition Ed Schultz News and Commentary. I want to talk about Judge Napolitano getting booted off Fox. I want to talk, <laughs> I want to talk about health care and also Judge Gorsuch. So there's a lot on the table today. But I want to tell you this first. I'm just loving all the comments on Facebook after you listen to, to the work that I do here uh, every day on my podcast. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to, uh, through social media, Twitter and Facebook, we're going to announce exactly what time I'm going to produce this. And then we're going to put out a 1-800 number. And then you can call in. And then we'll take your phone call. And then you'll be part of the podcast. It's kind of a different way of doing radio, so to speak. But it's podcast radio. And it's caller interactive. So that's what we're going to do. So all of you wonderful lovelies out there, who love to rip me a new asshole every time. I, you know, I want to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to, I'm getting, I'm getting bored reading it on Facebook. I want to hear, I want to hear the love. I, w- I want to hear it right there uh, at 1-800. We got to come up with that, but that's, that's coming soon. And I'm looking forward to it. So all you have to do is check my Facebook page or my Twitter account. You'll see that, Hey, Ed's taking calls today at four o'clock Eastern time. Let me call up and give him a, just rip him a new one and we'll get into it. It would be like a radio show. And it'll be on this, okay? So anyway. All right, Judge Napolitano. This is a big development because the president acknowledged his sourcing of a story that there were three people that told him that the Brits were the ones that were putting the Trump Towers under surveillance during the campaign. And it gave the president some backup in the press conference with Angela Merkel from Germany the other day. He said, you should be talking to Fox News. Well, guess what? Fox News clearly had a conversation in-house. That afternoon, Shep Smith went on the air and did a disclaimer. And it was just uh, yesterday, I guess, that uh, Judge Napolitano got the ax, at least for a while, from uh, Fox News. And there's nothing worse in this business than being taken off the air because of content. You know, ratings are this, that, and the other. People make show changes all the time in the industry. But the fact of the matter is, if you're taken off the air because you may have uh, plagiarized your work, uh, which also happened recently over at Fox, by the way, uh, if uh, you say things that aren't true, and this has happened. And I know to a lot of you liberals out there, well, we've known that. Fox talks that shit all the time. Well, they got caught and they got caught at the highest level because the president of the United States was counting on him. How can you not laugh at that? Uh, it's, so, so Trump was using Judge Napolitano as his firewall and it cost Napolitano his job at Fox News. Am I, am I jaded for, for seeing the humor in this? I mean, it's look. I'd said in a previous podcast, you know what happened on this deal? Trump got up on a Saturday morning. He hates Obama to start with because Obama tore him a new one at the White House Correspondents Dinner about three or four years ago. He's never forgotten it. He hates Obama. He's going to say, we had a great meeting. But, you know, look, he hates a guy. And so he rolled out of bed one morning, pissed off, and thought he'd lay it on him. And his sourcing wasn't very good. Now, how is Trump going to get out of this? I'll tell you how he's going to get out of it. He's going to say, well, we saw in the House Intel Committee, you know, point to the fact that there's fake news in the Washington Post and also in the New York Times. So I thought I'd give you a little fake tweets. I I think that's how he's going to get out of it. I really do. Unless there's some unbelievable blockbuster uh, news that's going to come forward here pretty soon. But anyway, uh, I I find it rather humorous at this point. And I think the story is going to go away. I I do. And because the Democrats are hanging their hat on this investigation that Russia uh, was involved in the outcome of the election. Okay. Or meddling. What's meddling? Nobody's told me what meddling is. Give me some, give me some verification. Give me some absolutes. What was it? What did they do? Uh, Did they call you in the middle of the night and tell you how to vote? Anyway, um, so that's, and now the health care bill. Or did you want to? Did you want to talk about oh, no, Napolitano? No, well, I have one Napolitano. You got to chug my got, chain got, a little bit. I got one Napolitano point on this: is 
that that President Trump obviously made that that situation happen last week. But then last night, while he's in Louisville, Kentucky, he's talking about Colin Kaepernick, and he says, "Hey, I'm just reporting the news. I'm not, you know, I didn't, you know, source it. I just I'm reporting what the news is saying." Is that the? I mean, you can say what you want, but is that how the President of the United States is supposed to to, to come off the cuff, just saying, hey, "I just read it in the news." Look, uh, here's uh, Trump is a billionaire business guy who's never had to be beholden to anything. He's been able to get out of every jam he's ever been in in life because he's cash whipped people to do it or he's manipulated the situation. This government thing where there's actually some accountability and there's some expectation of people is a whole different world to the guy. And he's not going to get used to it. So we, I guess, got to get used to it and figure it out. That's how I, I, I don't think it's that complicated. I really do believe that this is a billionaire businessman who comes from a different world of reality, uh, who has never been held accountable. He's been able to cash whip his way out of any situation, get whatever he wants. Uh, money and authority are a hell of a thing when they go together. Let me tell you that right now. There's a lot of people that have money with no authority, but when you have money and authority, uh, that's a hell of a combination. And so that's that's where I think it's at. All right, what were we going to next? Well, Napolitano, he's booted <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, are we going to healthcare at Gorsuch? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Now, Trump, does this sound like a guy who's concerned about making friends? He goes up to the Hill today and tells House members, you either get in line or you're going to pay the consequences if you don't pass this bill, this health care bill, you're going to lose. And you're going to, in, in other words, I'm coming after you. He, he's counting, okay? He's calling in markers early on. He hadn't even been president 70 days yet, and he's calling in markers telling guys, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to figure this out. Then he leaves saying, we had a great meeting, and everything was wonderful, and he's confident that they're going to be able to get the votes. It's less than 48 hours away, the House vote. And if the Republicans are smart, and I'm, I'm saying the conservatives, but there's some ideologues that are in the way. If they're smart, they'll pass the House bill. They made some changes overnight. Uh, they dealt with uh, more tax credits for elderly people so they don't get hammered as bad. But I don't want a tax credit. What I want is a lower price and good health care. That's what America wants. And it may be impossible to deliver. We need single payer, okay? Um, the, the point being here is that Trump is telling these guys, look, you got to do it. The Republicans should pass it because it's going to go to the Senate. It's going to get reworked over there. It's going to get kicked back to the House. There's a lot of processes, which, of course, the Democrats found out back in 2009 and 2010, how this really all works. They call it sausage making, and I hate that term. <laughs> oh, this is the making sausage. And it just, no, I hate that term. Actually, it doesn't take very long to make sausage if you ever did deer sausage. <laughs> it happens pretty fast, actually if you have a good processor. Uh, so, look, I think the House should pass it and then, of course, the, the, to move the process. Now, I don't agree with the bill, but the ideologues may get in the way and it might not get done, and if they don't, then it's a big, big failure. And Trump knows that, and that's why he went to the Hill today and told these guys, look, you're going to lose your seat, and I, I'm going to be really pissed off. You know, they're behind closed doors. He's saying this if you don't get this deal done. This is what we ran on. This is what we promised the American people. Repeal and replace. Yeah. Uh, if, 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 so it gets through, okay? Let's say it does get through the right. House, goes to the Senate, comes back to the House, goes to the President, okay? Um, in the scenario now, it, it passed, but there's, say, you know, 20, 30 members on the, or on the Republican side who did not vote for it. Does Trump still come after him? Who did not vote for him? Yeah. I, Trump is going to get 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 back on anybody that doesn't line up with him. He's got a memory like an elephant <laughs> when it comes to stuff like that. He's a get back guy, uh, and I, I don't. And he's not afraid to, you know, take a stick and poke it in the eye of anybody if he wants something. That's his culture. So this could be. We could see a Trump so, wave in 2018. <laughs> well, look. I, I mean, here's like I said in the past. The Republicans have a benchmark to work from. There was Obamacare. If they're smart enough, they can win over a generation of voters by delivering something that the country thinks is better. 
And that's why they're selling so hard is because they know that this is not only a health care bill, but it's a political opportunity to set themselves up. They want to be able to go home and say, you know what? We told you we were going to get rid of Obamacare. We did. We told you we we're going to put something better in there. We took care of the young. We took care of the sick. We took care of the elderly. We took care of the businesses. We took care of the middle class. Look at that. They want to be able to go home and say all this stuff. And so, uh, yeah, and Trump knows that. All right. What do we got on Gorsuch today? I have to hand it to Gorsuch. The guy is smooth. He's personable. He has uh, a sense of humor, but even if you've got a sense of humor, it's very rare that you would show it in this setting. And he had no problem showing who he was uh, throughout this process. Uh, it was, it's been pretty, really a almost non-eventful hearing, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was non-committal on a lot of answers saying that, you know, he's not a Republican or a Democrat, a judge shouldn't be a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, to go back to what John Roberts said in his confirmation hearings, he was there to call balls and strikes. That's basically the format that Gorsuch has followed today. He gave a lot of non-committals because he doesn't want anybody to think that he's going to be ruling a certain way when he's on the bench. Now, of course, the Democrats, especially Al Franken from Minnesota, went after him on previous ideological things that he has done in his career and said that how can you actually you know be objective when this is your past? So uh, Roe v. Wade came up, which we'll talk about on the news show tonight. Uh, guns came up, uh, which I thought was really interesting, and none of the Democrats really jumped on that. But I think all in all, it's been pretty non-eventful. Although he did assure the uh, committee that his position on workers' rights is solid. And we have not gotten any union reaction on this. I don't even know how, how the unions have, whether they've researched Gorsuch or not. But he says he's going to give a fair shot to workers. Uh, and then he went on to have pretty much a non-answer after that. He had no opinions really on anything, on any of the previous rulings. Uh, he stated his record and how he fought for the little guy. And he claims that he's going to be a fair judge. And there were some workers' rights issues that came up on previous rulings. And uh, actually, I think Al Franken kind of took it to him pretty good and, and backed him up a little bit on, on this, on this issue. But I think he'll get confirmed. I think that he has uh, lowered the concerns of a lot of Democrats in this, in this hearing. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to make Schumer a little bit extreme if he goes against Gorsuch. That, I mean, that's the way the hearing came off today. Um, you know, Trump, uh, and you just talked about Roe v. Wade, and Trump said obviously he's going to put a justice who would overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, just, you know, looking towards the future, do you see this coming up in the next four years? I do. I do see it coming up. And I do think that Gorsuch passed the buck on that today, and I think that he would be a judge that would vote to reverse Roe v. Wade. But he kept saying it's settled. It's been challenged and it's settled. It's challenged and settled. Dianne Feinstein brought it up, but she didn't press him very hard on it. And uh, he was going to supply some more documents to her uh, in that regard. But keep in mind, uh, oh, and by the way, Gorsuch also said that he made no deals or no agreements to be confirmed onto the Supreme Court. That's interesting because Donald Trump said that he was going to appoint a judge who was going to overturn Roe v. Wade. And that, of course, is what a lot of the Democrats and activists are very concerned about. And uh, that he's not going to be good on women's rights. He has not been very good on women's pay, equal pay. So we'll see where it all goes. That's all I got uh, for you today. That's all you got? That's all I, I got. thought for sure you were going to ask me about RT. Now, <laughs> our network came up 32 times yesterday in the hearings of the House Intelligence Committee. And I want all of you to know that I have called uh, Terry Sewell, who is a congresswoman from Alabama, said some things about our network that I don't think she knew the answers and she was drawing some assumptions. And so I called her office today and I asked if I could have a, about a five or 10 minute meeting with her, talk to her communications guy, a guy named Chris, he's a very nice guy. Uh, and they're supposed to call me back because I would like to explain some things to her about this network, RT America, how we function, what we do, what our decision-making process is, because I think that there is a real misconception on Capitol Hill. It's like we're the whipping posts that, you know, we're absolutely saying everything Putin wants us to say, which is total bullshit. And we may be state funded 
to a certain level, but we're independent. And I write all the political news on my show, and I, I certainly are, are balls and strikes. That's why conservatives and liberals do come on my show, because they know I'm fair about it. I have a totally different job today than what I had over at MSNBC. I'm not doing an opinion show anymore. And it, it kind of grates on me. I called up Lindsey Graham's office last week. He wouldn't meet with me. I said, this isn't about an interview. People laughed at us. We called him back and said, well, can Ed meet with the chief of staff? Then they got nice and professional saying, thanks for the call, but no, we're not going to talk to RT. So how in the world are we going to be able to get our point across or even have a fair hearing with people about who we are and what we do if this is the mindset we're dealing with here in Washington? But it's a battle. I'm going to keep going. Another friend of mine, Tim Ryan from Ohio. Uh, I can still consider him a friend, but I did tell him I thought we were better friends than this when he told me last fall, I can't go on your show anymore until this Russia thing settles down. What Russia thing? I haven't hacked anybody. I mean, I told him, I said, you've come on my program and been given a fair shot. You've been on numerous times, but here's the deal. The Democrats basically collectively are giving House members shit if they come on RT America. Because, oh, you're over there on that Russian network, which is ridiculous. Now, be a fair-minded thinking person. Some of what we do, not all of it, some of our show ends up playing on the international out of Moscow, Okay. Some of it plays out of London on international. Most of it doesn't. Most of it's uh, American-centered news, okay? And we do cover the Middle East and Europe and everything else. But uh, we make our own content decisions. And so I'm disappointed that uh, the Democrats are, are pigeonholing this network without even knowing what our funding source is. Uh, knowing exactly how it all works, that this is actually an American company, uh, who works for us, uh, how many professionals we have here, and yet we are continually the whipping post for all of these folks to the point where we end up being mentioned 32 times in a House intelligence hearing. There's an element of sadness to this. I don't think they really want the truth in many respects. Back tomorrow. <laughs>